Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza here at the Hatfield Public Library with a big box of adult books. I think they're all fiction. We'll see if I'm wrong. Uh, and we are coming out of the gate really strong with this box because we have two copies of, oops, let me position myself, two copies of Ellen Hildebrand's The Five Star Weekend. So every year at this time, she publishes a book and everybody wants to read them. And they're always very beachy. Um, if you live here in Massachusetts, there's often a local interest because they take place in Nantucket. Um, so yeah, someone who was with a pic picture perfect life Sorry, I can't read this. It's very, it's funny. It's black on orange, which is hard to read. Uh, has a popular food blog. Oh, that's a fun topic. Um, then she's married to Matthew, but they get in an argument and he leaves and is killed. Ooh, and that cracks her perfect life. Yeah, no doubt. And her relationship with her daughter becomes troubled. And so she hears about something called the Five Star Weekend. One woman organizes a trip for her best friend from each phase of her life. Um, and she decides to host her own five-star weekend. But hers doesn't turn out to be a joyful Holly, Hallmark movie. So uh, that's the five-star weekend. Again, two copies. Yay. We have this one, which I am wanting to read, called The Last Animal by Ramona Asubel. Um, I just, I really want to read it because I kind of love this cover. <laughs> I, they say don't judge a book by its cover. I always judge books by their cover. Um, it's a single mother and two teen daughters engaged in a wild scientific experiment, and they discover themselves in the process. They go to Siberia. They accidentally discover a perfectly prefer preserved baby mammoth. Um, uh, and then it sounds like maybe they're trying to recreate mammoth with the DNA. Wow. I think, I think I'm intrigued. Uh, the Daydreamers by Laura Hankin. And this is the author of A Special Place for Women, a deliciously entertaining novel about the stars of a popular teen show from the early 2000s. We have another beach read, this one by Sunny Hostin, who is a television personality. Um, a view, she's a co host of The View, and this is her second novel which is a follow-up but I think not a sequel I think you can go ahead and read this one it takes place in Sag Harbor Sag Harbor about a close-knit community of African-American elites who go there every summer since the 1950s and then real estate developers discover the hidden gem we have the Niger wife I'm getting like a little thriller. It's kind of got the beachy vibe, but I think that something about the darkness and the positioning makes me think there's a thriller element. So it's uh, another person with a thriller life, with a perfect life. I'm sorry. It's going to turn into a thriller life. Um, so she has a handsome house, husband, a palatial house in Lagos, Nigeria, a glamorous group of friends. Um and then she disappears, the cracks in her life show, and her auntie Claudine is trying to find her. And so she's going through discovering all the secrets in her life. Hmm, this might be a good one for me. I'm intrigued by that. I like the idea of the aunt trying to sort of piece everything together. The Great Reclamation by Rachel Hang. Uh, great cover. I don't know how well you can see that. Sorry, there's a lot of glare today. Um, but it's got sort of like almost an abstract painting look with, with the ocean. And Albon is born into a fishing village in Singapore in 20th century in the waning days of, waning years of British rule. Um, he discovers, oh, look, this is, Oh, interesting. I thought this was going to be historical fiction, but it turns out there's like a, a little fantasy element because he discovers he can locate um, movable islands that no one else can find. Oh, so it's a coming of age story. Um, I like this. I like this idea. I like that there's sometimes it's fun. You get a lot of history, um, but then you also sort of have these like interesting, like what if things worked differently? I mean, I assume it's, I assume there aren't actually movable islands. Uh, he discovers he has the unique ability to locate bountiful movable islands that no one else can find. Hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, that sounds like something. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're real. I, I assumed it was a fantasy thing, but I don't know. I don't want to be wrong. Next book. Next book. We have The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Bramer. And uh, what's the point of giving someone a beautiful death if you can't give yourself a beautiful life? Oh, okay. So this is about a woman who um, works as a death doula and but has no life as her of her own. Uh, we have James Patterson's new book, Cross Down. It's an all cross and John Sampson thriller, and it's co-written with Brendan Dubois. We have this book called Love Buzz by Neely Tubadi Alexander. Um, paperback, if you're looking for something lightweight. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So this sounds like a very, very unpleasant bachelorette party with um, hangovers and just bad crowds and people. And then she meets a handsome stranger and she's overwhelmed with desire to find him, but she only knows a few facts about him. It's kind of a classic setup. Like you meet someone and then you have to, you're like, oh, sh why did I let them go? I have to go find them. Uh, we have a more classic romance setup. We have Forever Your Rogue by Erin Langston. I just think this cover is so fabulous. <laughs> I don't even read romance and I want to read this. Um, and this is about um, a newly widowed young mother uh, who is faced with the prospect of losing children to an overbearing relative, overbearing relatives, and she needs to find a husband um, as soon as possible. And then you have a... You have a um, Nathaniel Travers is a charismatic rogue who has to get married or he's going to get cut off from his bank accounts. So they have a fake um, engagement. Um, I just feel like they're going to fall in love. I love this setup. I love the marriage of convenience setup in romance novels. Uh, the Half Moon by Mary Beth Keene. Um, who wrote again, ask again, yes. And this one is about a bartender who wants to own a bar and his wife is trying to have a baby. Um, this just sounds like a life of people, people trying to live their lives in a small town novel. You are here, Karen Lynn Greenberg. And uh, how did I get that one other one? So perfectly, it wasn't reflecting. There we go. Uh, this is a once bustling mall prepares to shut its doors for the final time. Um, wow. And then it says somebody does a shocking act, but it doesn't say what it is. Um, and it's all about the people inside the mall. Oh, this is, this is great because it's like the hairstylist um, and the store bookstore manager and all the different people. And then, yeah, it doesn't say what the shocking act is. Another cute little paperback. This is a cozy mystery by Kate Carl Carlisle, dressed to drill. So very fun if you just want something, uh, you know, not too dramatic to bring on your vacation. And then we have Amanda Quick, The Bride Wore White. Lovely cover. And oh my gosh. Wow, this kind of, I was like maybe getting a little bit of like a romance historical fiction vibe, but this sounds much more like a kind of a thriller. It says it's a des a psychic is desperate to escape her destiny and a killer. Um, wow. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I'm just going to read this. I don't, I can't even make sense of it. Okay. So she's a psychic pays well, but then her latest client's trying to kill her. I guess she figures that out because she's a psychic. So she finds a new home and a job and she thinks she's good, but then she gets kidnapped and drugged and wo wakes up in a bloodstained wedding dress in the honeymoon suite next to a dead man. The press is outside the motel. The police sirens are in the distance. She's being framed. She knows who's responsible but how will anyone believe her? I mean, that sounds like a really bad situation. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's hard. Especially if the reason you know these things is because you're a psychic and maybe people don't don't really believe that. <laughs> so uh, that was my box. Uh, we will be getting these books out on the shelf as soon as possible. Bye.